Hey everyone, Jordan here with 9to5toys. Well, it's Pi Day 2020 and this year's circumstances might be a little bit different because of the coronavirus going around. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do my first Raspberry Pi project and build a retro gaming emulator. A lot of my nostalgia for retro games revolves around uh, computer games rather than console games. A lot of point and click adventures like King's Quest and Space Quest. So, so we're going to take a look at getting some free ports and some legally licensed point and click adventure games and how to get those loaded and easy to play here on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to pick up my first Raspberry Pi and I went for the latest model, the Raspberry Pi 4, and they had just dropped the price I think to $35 for the 2 gigabyte version and that's what I picked up here. Now let's talk about some of the other things you'll need for this build. Obviously you'll need a micro SD card to put all the information on and the one that I'm using is a 32 gigabyte SAN disk. Um, I'll put some links down in the description, uh, but you know, Prices are coming down on these, so you probably want to get one that you can kind of future-proof your build a little bit too. So if you can afford a little more space, you should probably spring for that. Another thing you'll need beyond just the SD card is the Raspberry Pi doesn't come with a power source, so you want to get one of those as well. Uh, I picked up the official power source from the same site that I bought the Raspberry Pi from. I think this was another eight or nine dollars. And then of course a case is recommended as well. Um, there is a really affordable official case for the Pi 4. I think it's about $5, so not very much. It's a really nice looking case. Or if you have a 3D printer, there are plenty of builds out there that other people have done, plenty of prints. So I went on Thingiverse and found a cool little sliding case uh, that I printed on my Monoprice Maker Ultimate. Um, so we'll get this installed here and you can see how that all works. All right, so I have the Pi 4 inside of this little slider case now. Obviously my print isn't perfect, <laughs> but but it works well enough for this and I can you know buy the official one if I want to or change it up if I want to. So we'll run with that for now. And some other things that you're going to need are a keyboard, a mouse, and a controller. Uh, pretty much any keyboard will work. I'm using the Razer Huntsman. Obviously it has quite a bit of overkill, but that's what I had sitting around. So that's what I'm gonna to use to get this uh, up and running. And then any mouse will work as well either. Um, wireless mouse, you can plug the little 2.4 gigahertz receiver into one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi and it'll pick it up. Wireless works just fine. Or you can use a, you know, a standard wired mouse. I'm gonna be using a Razer mouse. Um, like I said, it doesn't really matter. I'll link to some cheapies down in the description. Uh, you can use pretty much whatever you want. And really this stuff can be just for setup unless you wanna you know, keep diving in and do a lot of different changes on the Raspberry Pi 4 in your emulator. Uh, I think the keyboard and the mouse can pretty much just be for setup. But if you're doing a point and click adventure, you're probably gonna want a mouse. You can use the controller as well. Uh, we'll get into all that here in a little bit. And for controllers, um, the Raspberry Pi 4 does have Bluetooth built in. So if you wanna get Bluetooth devices and set those up, you can do that. Uh, from my understanding, that process is a little bit more involved, well, a lot more involved than just plugging in a USB cable. Um, but obviously that can be a pretty convenient way of playing if you have this on your TV and you're sitting on your couch and you just use a wireless device. Um, but for this setup, I'm just using wired devices uh, just to make this easy. So what I'm using is a wired uh, Xbox One controller. I do know that the PlayStation, the DualShock 4 controllers work as well. Uh, I don't have one of those to actually show you how it works, but um, that's another one. That's another common one that I've seen people using for these builds. So from my somewhat limited research, like I said, this is my first project with a Raspberry Pi, uh, but it seems like the best way to do emulation on a Pi, or at least the most common, is to use a program called RetroPi. And within RetroPi, you're pretty much set up to do any sort of emulation. So that's how you do all of your like NES and Sega, all of that. If you have the ROMs, um, however you got them, if you have the ROMs, um, that's where you would install them. Uh, there are folders within RetroPie. Once you get it all installed on the Raspberry Pi, you can just drop your ROMs in and they'll show up on there. Uh, for this video, I don't have any ROMs. I'm not going to be showing any of that. Um, we're gonna be doing some officially, yeah, officially licensed and more like freeware, shareware types of games that are out there right now. The only downside with RetroPie is that at the time of this video, there isn't a build yet for the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the latest was Raspberry Pi 3. But there's a really great YouTube tutorial on how to get RetroPie onto a Raspberry 4 by ETA Prime on YouTube uh, using a program called Raspbian. So with all that in mind, the first step to getting this set up is to flash 
Raspbian onto an SD card. And so you'll need another computer to do this. Um, these programs both work on Windows and Mac OS, so you can choose whichever one you want to use with that. I'm going to be using my laptop, I'm going to be using my MacBook Pro. Um, so we'll show you how to do that real quick. So here's the video that I was talking about earlier from ETA Prime. And down in the description, he has some links to these different downloads. And I'll also put those in uh, this YouTube video. Um, but the first thing we need to download is Raspbian, which is uh, over here. So there are a couple different downloads available for Raspbian. The one that I did was the Raspbian Buster with desktop. Um, you can either do torrent or zip and download that. And then the other thing that you want to download is this Balena Etcher. And this works for, um, there are different options for Windows, for Mac OS, or for Linux. So you can choose your operating system and download that. So I already have these downloaded, um, and they're sitting right here on my desktop. So basically, um, with the Etcher, with the Belena Etcher, you just run it like a program and start that up. Once the program is installed, um, there, it's a really simple process to get this going. You select the image, which is the Raspbian that we want to burn onto the SD card. So you select that, and then you select where you want it to go. Um, and obviously this already has the Apple SD card reader selected, so it has my SD card. It's not putting this on any other drive. Hit continue, select that, and then you hit flash. And you wait for this to be done. And obviously you put in your password. And you wait for that to flash and finish its process, so. All right, and with that, uh, the flash is all done, so that means that the micro SD card is ready to be inserted into the Raspberry Pi. So you don't need to eject it from your computer or anything. It's already ejected, so we'll just pull it out of there. I'll take it out of my SD card adapter. And then on the Raspberry Pi, um, with the case, you can see there's a nice little slot for it, which is perfect. Um, and it goes with the label facing down to fit to fit in there in the Raspberry Pi. So we'll slide that in, and now we're ready to head over to the Raspberry Pi and start setting everything up there. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug in my uh, peripherals here. Obviously, since the uh, Pi 4 has the four USB inputs, uh, that's pretty awesome. So you don't have to worry about you know having space to plug everything in. So I've got my mouse, my controller. And I'll plug in my keyboard as well. And I've seen some of these setups where people don't use a mouse as well. They just use the controller. Uh, so you might not have to worry about that. But um, I find this easy to have all these four set up. All right. So you can see that I have all of my peripherals plugged in. And I have a HDMI. This is a micro HDMI cable, which if you don't have one, those are pretty cheap. I'll link to one down in the description. Um, and I just have it going to a cheap monitor. I don't even know if it's a monitor. It's just like a screen that uh, my wife and I bought a long time ago and haven't used for a while. So it was perfect for, for this project. And then we're going to plug in the power on the Raspberry Pi 4. So as you can see, it's starting to boot up here. And right away, we can see that it... Uh, needs to do some setup, some rebooting. So just let it do its thing here. It doesn't take too long. All right, and here we are within Raspbian. It looks like a really nice, easy to use operating system here. It uh, gives you a nice welcome. You can see we have the mouse connected and everything's moving smoothly with that. So we're gonna do a few things to get everything set up here. So we'll click Next. Um, obviously we're in the United States. We're gonna select that, American English, time zone. I'm in Indiana. Use English language, use US keyboard. Then we'll hit next again, and it's setting all that up. All right, so uh, by default, the username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Uh, obviously, you can change that whenever you want. Um, so you can set a new password here if you want. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And then there's a little menu about the desktop, which helps you figure out if there are any issues or not uh, with like black borders on the side or anything. But everything looks good on mine, so I'm going to hit next. Then the next screen is to get your Wi-Fi set up. So just find your network, select it, and hit next, and you'll be prompted to enter the password. So for this tutorial, for this video, for getting this set up, uh, you will want to have uh, internet connected to your Raspberry Pi. All right, and the first thing here, uh, it's going to check to see if there's any software updates, which is always a good idea, so we're going to make sure this is up to date. Okay, well, it said there was an error comparing versions and timeout was reached, so we're just going to hit OK and continue on with it anyways. 
Uh, then we need to restart the Pi, so hit restart. All right, so now with everything set up within Raspbian, the next step is to install RetroPie, which we do through the terminal. So really easy to access the terminal. Just click it up here along the menu bar along the top, and then we're brought up into this menu right here. So first up, we're going to need to get the script for RetroPie, which we do by entering this command, which is sudo git clone depth equals one https colon colon slash com slash pies git all right and we'll hit return and that's gonna start downloading it all right and we're done so we have the script for that and these are all the commands that I got from ETA Prime. I'll link them down in the description. You can also follow his tutorial on YouTube. Um, and I'll also put them up, obviously I'll put them up on the video here. So be sure to enter it exactly how it shows um, just to make sure that everything works. And the next step is that we need to navigate into that directory. So we're gonna do CD RetroPie setup. And that'll bring us into the directory. Then we need to make a quick change to the RetroPie package to tell it that we're using a Raspberry Pi 3 instead of the 4 that we actually are using. And so to do that in terminal, we're going to put in sudo nano tropi underscore packages.sh. That's going to bring us into the package. Then with the arrow keys, we're going to navigate down underneath version and we're going to enter underscore underscore platform equals r pi three we're gonna hit enter one more time to add another line underneath that and then we're going to save and exit so control x y for yes and then enter to save the same name all right so now we've modified that package and we should be ready to set up retropy so to do that, we'll run the setup script. So we'll do sudo period forward slash retropy underscore setup dot sh. And that's gonna bring us into the setup for retropy. And this will take a little bit the first time to get everything up and running. And then once it does, uh, you'll know because you're met with this gray box on the blue screen. And this is a note that you can get just pre-made RetroPie uh, SD images that you can use to flash onto your Pi, but they don't have the one available for Pi 4 yet. So that's why we're using this, uh, this method of doing this. So we'll hit OK. All right, so here we're in the main menu, and we're just going to do a basic install of RetroPie. And this can take a little bit, so um, just hit Enter. Make sure you're over on yes, hit enter again, and we'll wait for it to install. All right, so that took about 15 minutes. Uh, and then once it's done, you'll be back here at the main menu. So here's where you can start adding some of the free ports that are already built into RetroPie, which is pretty awesome. So if we go down to manage package, and then if we go down to manage optional packages, um, they all have kind of, you know, weird names, but as you go down through them, there's a little description down at the bottom of the screen, which tells you what they are. So here's what we're going to be installing in a little bit, the Scum VM, but I wanted to show a couple other packages that are down in here. So obviously Doom and Doom 2, obviously Duke Nukem 3D, another very fun game. And then another one that I was really excited about was Prince of Persia, uh, SDL Pop. So it's a port of Prince of Persia. So, and these are all shareware, freeware, um, ready to go. So all you do is just click on them and then hit install from pre-compiled binary. And that's gonna be installed within RetroPie. Um, so that's really easy to do and really awesome. We'll do Prince of Persia real, real quick here so we can see how that works. We'll hit okay, yes. And then we'll let that download and install. And I don't think this takes nearly as long as what the installation and setup of RetroPie did. Yeah, that took all of maybe 20 seconds to install that, so that's great. So we're going to uh, hit the right arrow key, go back. We're going to go back again. Oh, wait, no, we're going to stay on this menu. So um, the other big thing we want to do, uh, so now we have a port of a, of a computer game installed, um, but I want to install um, a point-and-click game. Um, 
the Space Quest series is what I was hoping to do. So this is where Scum VM comes in. Uh, this is a emulator that just lets you run a lot of these point and click games like King's Quest, Space Quest, um, and there are quite a few free ones that they have on their website that they have linked to. But the other great thing is that you can get uh, actual licenses for some of these software that's not free to play. So for like the Space Quest series, um, you can buy those on, I think it's GOG.com. That's where I got them. And um, you can purchase them on there and download that. So Space Quest V was the one that uh, I kind of remembered playing as a kid and was really excited to try out again. And it's pretty fitting that the uh, plot in that is that you're fighting a galactic uh, mutation that's taken over the galaxy. So obviously while I'm uh, kind of quarantined in my house from the virus, I'll be uh, fighting off the galactic mutation. So I thought that was pretty fitting. So the first step we're going to have to do is install Scum VM. So we'll hit enter on Scum VM and we'll do install from pre-compiled binary. And this is another one that takes quite a while to install. So we'll navigate over to yes and hit enter and it'll start installing. Okay, I was wrong. That didn't take very long at all to install, <laughs> maybe five minutes. So, uh, so that's good to go. So we're gonna hit back and we're gonna hit back. All right, so now I think we're ready to hop into RetroPie uh, and kind of check that out. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna exit out of this setup and we're going to, in terminal here, enter emulation station. And we'll hit that and that should bring up RetroPie. All right, and this first screen we have here is saying that it needs a gamepad. So this is where we're gonna take our Xbox One controller or whatever gamepad that you have um, and it's not recognizing it right now because it's not turned on. So turning on the Xbox One wireless controller, once it's on and connected, we can press a button. It recognizes it, and now we're in a configuration panel. So here it just wants to configure all the different buttons um, with the actual buttons on the controller. So we'll do this real quick. D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, D-pad right, start, select, button A, button B, X and Y. And then we have the shoulders, left trigger, right shoulder. For left thumb, uh, just push in the stick. And same with right. So left analog, you just want to push it up and then back down. You don't want to hold it. Right analog, left and right. And then the hot key, we're going to use the Xbox home button. All right, then with that, we'll hit OK. And that brings us in here. So here, this is the main menu where you can go through uh, RetroPie, which is where all of your ROMs are going to be if you're going to install a bunch of ROMs. Um, then you have the Scum VM, which we just installed. And then you have the ports, which is where we installed Prince of Persia. So we'll go in there real quick. You can see Prince of Persia is in there. I'll hit B to go back. We're not going to have anything in RetroPie. Uh, so hitting configuration uh, is just going to bring up the menu here. Um, to get games with the RetroPie, if you have a bunch of ROMs um, within the file folder back in Raspbian, um, there's going to be a place where you can put all of those ROMs in a specific folder for SNES or Atari or you know whatever you have. Um, so we're going to go over to Scum VM, click on that, and you can see there's start there's start Scum VM, which will bring up the Scum VM menu. So now that we have Scum VM installed, everything's working. Uh, we need some games to go with this. So first thing we're going to do is exit out of uh, emulation station. We're going to hit start on the controller, go down to quit and quit emulation station. And so what I did for this uh, game file is I went to GOG.com. You can make an account. You can purchase. They have a ton of games on there. And one that they have was Space Quest 4, 5, and 6 all in one package for 10 bucks. So it's official license. You, know, you can do whatever you want with it. So I purchased that. And then you can download the GOG Galaxy, which is kind of like their launcher where you can put your library in and actually launch these games. And so you download that, you install Space Quest V, and then once you have installed Space Quest V, you have all of the game files that are necessary for it. So you can navigate to the games files by right-clicking on the game and hitting Show in Finder or Reveal in Explorer. And then once you have the files, the easiest way to transfer them from a computer to the Raspberry Pi uh, because we're using Raspbian, is with a USB thumb drive. So we'll just install this in your computer. Okay, so with the thumb drive in here, uh, I'm going to go back to my desktop where I have the game saved. You can see here we have Space Quest V. It has all the files in there. We're just going to drag this over to the jump drive. Put it there. 
This, it's only about 94 megabytes for this whole game, so should go pretty quick. All right, once that's done transferring, we'll just eject that and bring that over to our Raspberry Pi. And we'll just install the USB thumb drive in here. And Raspbian immediately recognizes that there was a USB drive imported. Um, so to ask you what you wanna do with it, we'll do Open File Manager. So that brings it up and obviously we can see here, uh, Space Quest 5 is right there. So now what we wanna do is we need to find a folder on our computer to put that in that we can then um, navigate to in Scrum VM. We can tell Scrum VM where to look for the game. So we'll just make a new window here real quick because I just like dragging and dropping. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to home folder, which brings up Pi. We're gonna go to documents. And then I'm going to make a new folder in here by right clicking, I'm just gonna call this Pi Games. And that's within my documents. And so now we can just drag and drop Space Quest 5 into Pi Games. All right, then once that's done, we need to safely eject the drive, which we can do up here with this eject button. And then we'll click on that and it's gone. So I'll remove my thumb drive and then we should be able to get back into Scum VM and get this set up. The only issue that I've had with this so far is there was a couple times where I couldn't get Scum VM and ports to open up properly. It would, you know, I'd be going through the menu and emulation station, click on the game, and it would like go to a black screen, go out to the desktop, and then just pop it back into the emulation station when I actually start it up. Um, but then once I left a terminal window open, just left it open, didn't matter where it was, uh, everything worked properly. So if you're having any issues, I would suggest leaving a terminal window open, um, which is easy for us right now because we're gonna go back up, uh, push up on the keypad to get to emulation station, and we're gonna run that again. That's just some weird issue that I had. I don't really know what it was, um, but that's one, one issue that I had. So we're gonna pick up our Xbox controller again, go over to Scum VM, hit A. We're gonna start Scum VM this time. You can see it pops back out and it says launching. You can do some different configurations in here if you want. Um, I haven't needed to do any of that, so I'm not going to. And so here is where you can load a game uh, into Scum VM that you can play. So we're gonna go over here, click add game, and we need to navigate to where we have the game installed. So we'll hit go up. And here we are, we're at home slash pi, and we're gonna go to documents. Double tap A for that. We'll go to Pi Games, Space Quest 5. We're gonna hit choose. You can add a little short ID here if you want. Uh, you can see it's already picking up the name, Space Quest 5, the next mutation, DOS and English. And we're gonna leave it like that. Uh, language English, platform DOS, and we'll hit OK. And so now we can hit start and the game should load. And you can see there we have the Sierra logo starting. There we go, Space Quest 5, the next mutation. So you can see introduction, you can play a new game, you can restore an old game, which is nice, uh, read the techno babble, and quit. Um, so obviously we'll uh, hit play new game, and there we are, we start right into it. Um, and for this you can either use, because we have the controller and the mouse plugged in, uh, you can use either one that you want to play this game, um, which is just a really handy way to play it. So. And I'm just using the controller to uh, move around here. Or you can also use the mouse to do the same. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to get started with retro gaming on your Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.